The Python programming language has almost become a universal language in machine vision and machine learning. There are certainly other languages that challenge that title, but as Raspberry Pi operating system users, we can also use it out of convenience. Welcome to Unboxing Tomorrow, where we discuss electronics, robotics, IoT, communication systems, and more recently, machine vision. That last category gives me a convenient excuse to field test a couple of test beds I've been working on. The main processor is an off-the-shelf Raspberry Pi 4, the casing is a custom design, made mostly of carbon steel, and the rest is custom, something I covered briefly in my Lessons Learned series. You can consider this a direct follow-up to previous videos I've done on setting up the Raspberry Pi and setting up the camera. This video picks up where part 2 left off, so it's going to assume a working copy of the Raspberry Pi operating system, formerly Raspbian OS, and a working camera. And as always, you should back up any data that you consider important. Also, it's best to work in an anti-static work environment, However, this time around, we won't be handling the electronics quite so much. In your Raspberry Pi desktop, go ahead and open the terminal. We're going to be using a mix of the Bash shell and the Python environment. So to keep things simple, any commands you see with the dollar sign should go in the terminal as a Bash command. Anything you see with triple brackets belongs in the Python environment. In the terminal, go ahead and update everything by typing sudo apt-get update followed by sudo apt-get upgrade. Once that's completed, change directories by typing in cd slash home slash pi. If you remember part two, this is where we did most of our testing of the camera itself. This was done mostly through Raspi still, and we should probably check that that's still working by typing in Raspi still dash v. If things are in good order, then you should see a report on the type of camera you have attached. In my case, it's a Sony IMX219, part of the Raspberry Pi camera 2.1, so we can move on to testing Python by entering Python 3. This should load the Python environment, so test the camera toolchain by entering import Pi camera. If you don't see an error, go ahead and type in import Pi camera dot array. If you don't see any errors at this point, it means you're okay to proceed. Otherwise, see the video description for a possible fix or visit the website. For now, let's exit the Python environment by typing in exit with parentheses. Now that we're back at the shell, open the nano editor by typing in nano test the camera dot py. Again, recall that in this program, control O is how we save. Although more recently, GNU Nano 3.2 seems to have come to its senses by permitting control S as a save function. If you need to exit at any time, just hit control X. Now we're going to generate an application for Python that will generate a video preview for about 5 seconds. Basically enter what you see on the screen here, or you can check the video description. The description has a link to our website, or you can simply copy everything. If you're like me and you're viewing your Raspberry Pi through a VNC such as Windows Remote Desktop, know in advance that when you try to view the video preview, you're not going to see anything appear, although your Raspberry Pi power consumption will spike for the 5 seconds. This has to do with how the start preview method generates its video, and unless you're using an attached HDMI monitor or a composite video monitor, you probably won't be able to see anything. Luckily, this isn't too important for now, so you can consider this whole program an optional step. Speaking of programming, when you're done, save everything, again with Control o and then exit with Control x Back in the shell, execute the program by typing in python3 test the camera dot py. This should give you five seconds of live video, and unless you get an actual error message, you're pretty much good to proceed. Next it's time to try and see if we can capture and save a series of still images, again using Python. This time, open the nano editor by typing in nano test timed capture dot py. Like before, we're importing two modules right before we instantiate and configure the camera. Towards the end, we have a for loop that will iterate once every minute. Each time we want our target file name to increment its index number, which is handled by the loop's iteration counter. Finally, it's worth mentioning that if you need this image rotated, you're probably better off sticking to values like 0, 90, 180, and 270. Every other value I tried seemed to always be rounded down to one of those four values. Like before, we can save, exit, and run the application by typing in Python 3 test timed capture dot py. Give it a couple minutes and you should be able to see in your home directory sequentially numbered images generated by the for loop.
taking a snapshot every minute isn't terribly exciting, but with a little imagination, we could easily use a module such as GPIO0 to have those snapshots triggered by one of the Raspberry Pi's mini I.O. pins. Of course, video would be even more exciting still, so let's try that by returning back to the terminal and typing nano test video record dot pi. Type in, or copy, the code that you see on the screen, and again you can find this in the link in the description. Save and exit once more, and once again execute the program by typing in python3 testvideorecord.py. If you return to the file manager, then you should see the video recording as myvideo.h264. If you prefer the mp4 format over the h264 codec, then you can retrace our steps from last time by typing in mp4 box dash add video test dot h264 video test dot mp4. If you get an error saying that it's unrecognized, you might want to install gpack by typing in sudo apt-get install gpack. While small tests like this might seem mundane, it is an important first step towards doing more interesting, more advanced work such as video streaming and object detection. Of course, more advanced features usually come with more technical frustrations, such as the video preview limitation. I'm pretty sure the Pi Camera developers had their own reasons for doing it this way, possibly to reduce latency, but new users are bound to find this sort of thing counterintuitive and irritating. Luckily, there are several workarounds that don't involve HDMI. One is to stream the video to a TCP port, but this is a topic all to itself. Let me know in the comments if that looks like something I should cover in the future. And in the meantime, if you're looking for a larger framework for doing something like machine vision, consider using OpenCV. OpenCV was designed to be cross-platform, and with just a little adjustment, Python applications using OpenCV can be ported over to the Raspberry Pi, or vice versa. It's also worth noting that Dr. Adrian Rosebrock has an entire website dedicated to this. The two of us aren't affiliated, but the website is helpful and well organized. If you do plan on installing OpenCV for the Raspberry Pi, know that doing this from source will probably take two to four hours. It's rewarding when it works, but Linux open source seems to usually have severe limits when it comes to feature proofing and backward compatibility. This is one of the nastier and less talked about aspects of Linux development, which makes me reluctant to do a walkthrough video on it that might simply become obsolete in just a couple of years. I can say firsthand that the process does work. If you found this helpful, be sure to like and share the video. This helps me figure out exactly what people are interested in, and it helps the channel in general. Consider joining us on Patreon, where we have a monthly poll and lessons learned on technical builds like this one. The monthly poll for August 2020 basically wants to know if videos like this one should be translated into languages other than just English. And with that, stay well, and as always, have a great day.